Welcome to Frankly Developing. I'm your host, Frank, and today let's see if you can read source code. Everyone typically learns how to write source code. However, as you might know, the time we spend on reading source code is way more than the time we spend writing it. Yet, somehow, in education, the focus is strictly on learning how to write programs. Let me change that today and get you started on your journey towards mastery of source code reading. If you want more insightful content like this, make sure to hit that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, you'll stay updated with our latest videos on mastering clean code practices and leveling up your development skills. Like, subscribe, and most importantly, let's keep building remarkable software. Reading source code is quite similar to reading a normal text, and yet quite different as well. Let's start with a recap of the different skill levels for reading a text. Here's the first verse of the 1922 poem, The Chaos. Go ahead and see if you can read it. Now, let's break it down. On the first level, we have single characters, A, B, C, your alphabet. On the second level, we compose these into so-called words. The next level is another composition words and some special characters into sentences. In terms of what you can see on a screen or a piece of paper, this is it. And in fact, you can even teach a two-year-old to read based on these three levels. However, they would have no idea about what they read. Because without the fourth level, you cannot understand anything. So level four is the semantics. In this case, the author clearly tells us that the text is all about how to pronounce English words. As you can see at the end, horse and worse are pronounced completely different. And you really need to understand the words in order to pronounce them correctly. These little special characters, like commas, also heavily influence the semantics. You may know this example sentence, let's eat grandpa. Having the comma in there makes this an invitation to some grandfather to participate in maybe a dinner. But if you just remove that little comma, we're looking at a much more cannibalistic semantics. Yeah, commas can save lives. Let's add yet another level on top. Beyond the normal semantics of sentences, there's the level of intentionality. Consider sentences like when hell freezes over or when pigs fly. They have a direct meaning, flying pigs. But really the intention is to state a clear never. Meaning that is crucial for understanding, but not explicitly in the text. When we look at source code, we can identify similar levels. On the first level, we have pretty much the same alphabet, maybe with some fancy Unicode editions. We combine these into words. But when working with programming languages, these are referred to as tokens. On the third level, these tokens are combined to form expressions or statements, like a for loop. Here is an example code. As a beginner, you would read this on level 3 like this. It creates an empty list to store items, next it iterates over all the items, it checks for each item if it is free and adds that item to the list. At the end that list is returned. Enter level 4, semantics. What does the method actually do? It gives you back a list of items that only contains the free items. Coincidentally, this is the level what an AI like JetGPT will read the code at. Finally, let's go to the fifth level, intentionality. This is the point where you need to have more knowledge than what's merely in that piece of code. Just like we saw in the previous example, when pigs can fly, the intention is not literally in the characters we can see. 
for this code, let's consider two scenarios. First, consider a web shop. Uh, we want to provide the user a checkbox to quickly see the free items. And second, in a similar scenario, we want to calculate the shopping cart total, not adding to the price for free items. Once you start reading the source code on such a high level, you will also see a lot more problems in that code. Why is the method not just called free items? Could we define a much nicer way to get hold of the free items? In the end, you may change your code to, for example, use an extension method so that you can write something as simple as this. In the second scenario, however, you may wonder why we even need the code at all. Maybe we could set the price of free items to zero and sum them into the total like any other item. Your final solution for this method may simply be to eliminate the need for it completely. To summarize this, we can distinguish five levels of reading skills. Individual characters of the alphabet, which compose to tokens, which in turn compose to expressions and statements, and are associated with semantic meaning, and finally, there is the level of intentionality. Learning to read code at this highest level is a crucial skill for developers. But keep in mind that it's not actually about the code. You need to learn more about the world around it. Requirements, user stories, product vision, architecture, and understanding of all of these is needed to grasp the intentionality. On a positive note, as you spend way more time reading code than writing it, you can use that time to master this level, which in turn will help you write much better code. Think about this next time you read source code. And until then, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have fun developing.